Hey friends, Chris Maholka here. I just got a box in the mail. Let's see what's in it. Oh boy, let's paint. Hey friends, sometimes you get to be the kid in the candy store. And it's tempting to just start right in and paint baits and see what you can come up with, which is the fun of this whole process. But if you don't do the proper preparation on the baits before you paint them, you may end up with peeling or chipping or bubbling paint. Now I have people that, that fish my baits, like here's a little plug, a little bluegill plug, a bluegill looking plug for bass. Now I fished this a bunch of times. It's got a couple dinks on it where it's bounced off a rock or two, but the paint is still holding. It hasn't come apart. Part of the reason it is the preparation. I'm going to share some secrets with you that you don't find on YouTube or many other places on how to prep your baits so your paint job will last and go through a lot of seasons and a lot of fish without coming apart. So let's get started. Doesn't matter where you get your plastic baits, they're almost always formed the same way. They're formed in two halves in a mold that basically shoots plastic down into and presses them. Shoots one for each side. And then the little seam down the back on both sides, it goes into a ultrasonic welder that basically sets your lure down in a slot, comes down with a little press that vibrates extremely fast. It causes the seam to heat up and sticks the two halves together. Now the process itself is cool, but to get these things in and out of molds and in and out of the sonic welders and things, there's usually some kind of a mold release, a, a lubricant of some kind, an oil, a silicon spray, whatever. Most companies will wash their baits very well to make sure that those things are removed, but even you've seen me handling this, I've put finger oil on this in little scale patterns and everything just while I've been talking to you. So the first thing you do when you get your baits before you paint them is you degrease them. The easiest way to do that is just a container full of warm water, a little bit of Dawn dishwashing liquid, goes in, blues things up a little bit, makes it blue, you know you got a good amount in there, and you take a handful of baits, or however many you, you think they're not working on, and give them a bath. Now, Dawn is about the best degreaser you can buy anywhere. It's used on fur, feathers, and things. So, after we've swirled them around in the warm water, I'm going to take this to my sink and I'm going to pour it out and rinse these in good clean water. So, after the, the wash and Dawn and the rinse, just put your plugs on a towel, give them a good drying off. Now from this point on you don't want to handle these plugs too much with bare hands and especially not with dirty bare hands. Some people wear latex gloves or nitrile gloves to handle these. I have problems with those so I have to do this barehanded. But I also make sure that when I handle the plugs my hands are really clean and I only handle them by the bill if I can. If you have oil on your hands or you have very oily skin and you touch these and leave an oil print on the plug, that's a place the paint won't necessarily stick. That would cause paint to release in the form of a bubble or a wrinkle or a chip. So your big enemy now on plugs and anything you do before you paint these is any kind of oils or grease. In addition to degreasing your plugs, when you put them in the water, if you pull some out, you notice that anything has a little water inside the plug, you know you've got a leak somewhere, either top or bottom, along the seams normally, sometimes along the bill. So what you can do at this point is set that one aside, don't throw them out, just set it aside, and when you get a chance, put a little bit of epoxy down the seams, just spread it on with your finger or something else, and uh, to seal the seam up better, and chances are you'll save that, that bait then it's best to go through the degreasing process again just because you put an oily substance in the epoxy on it and you want to remove that plus it'll give you another chance to see if you've solved the leak. So the next thing to do before painting the bait is to tape off the bill area that you don't want to paint. 
Now again, since we've degreased our plug, we want to make sure we have very clean, very dry hands. And I just use regular masking tape. You don't need it to be real thick. And I like to tear off little pieces and just kind of stick them on the table just so they're all ready. And it usually takes five or six little pieces. Now again, with very dry, clean hands, I'm going to take one piece and I'm going to go in beside the eye in front because you usually can't get underneath it and then go around the side and then it will go underneath. If you get too big of a piece of tape, too long, you're going to be having extra stuff sticking out and it's really hard to wrap it around. So I'll do the other thing on the other side. I'll put that little piece right up against the, the little eye bolt there and wrap it around. So now you can see I've got a big place in front that isn't covered. That's real easy to do with just a piece that goes right up flat against the eye and wraps. And then we'll just do the same thing on the bottom. We'll use a small piece on one side to get in tight and a small piece on the other side to get in tight. So we're ready to paint. Now by covering this with tape, you can use an alligator clip with a little post on it. That's what I like to do. And just clip that right on the bill it gives you a very good solid foundation to hold it. Then I will take a piece of foam and just stick it right in the foam to hold it until I'm ready. Then I also use the foam after I've painted to hold them until they dry. So now I've showed you the preparation steps for your lures and this works for plugs and everything of course as well. But I haven't shown you the real secret that I found yet. So here goes. Years ago I was having trouble with my plugs and lures not holding their paint. And I do basswood, I do plastics, I do a lot of different things. And I went looking for something that would stick to almost all surfaces and take paint. And I didn't think about it really this way until I saw an art class going on at a local facility that I work at. And before they paint on a canvas, they coat it with gesso. Now gesso is an acrylic in this case. It's got a really good tack to it. It goes on smooth and bites into whatever you put it on. It's fairly permanent and it'll take almost any other kind of paint on top of it. So all of a sudden I realized that if I use this on my lures, it's going to stick to the plastics and the wood and everything. And it's also going to take whatever paint I put on top of it. So liquid gesso, in this case white, is the thing that I use on all of my baits under the paint. Now you don't need to buy a giant bottle like this. You can buy it in smaller sizes like this is a five dollar bottle that's going to last you years unless you paint a really a lot of bait. And the nice thing about this is white for most of your baits and it takes paint and looks, makes everything look great but if you're doing dark baits baits it also comes in black our good friend Bob Ross's official black gesso so it gives you not only a nice looking white bait to start painting on you can also do black baits as well now what I do with mine is I buy the larger containers normally like this and sometimes you can find small ones at garage sales or stuff where people have painted or have done something in hobby and have it and you can get it for a quarter or so. But I like to buy the bigger bottle and break it down into smaller containers. Now in this case I put plastic over the top to make sure this is sealed and isn't going to dry up in the bottle. So once you have it in your smaller bottles, label them so of course you know what it is. And this is fine if you're brushing on lures and you're brushing on lead, for instance, the thicker tends to work better. But if you are spraying it, I spray it, I mix this three quarters to one quarter acrylic thinner. And this is my acrylic thinner formula you can find in another video. But I break it down to make it thin enough to spray. Now, this is a fairly thick liquid. You're not going to spray it through your Awada Model C airbrush unless you've got a really big tip on it. What I tend to use is a really cheap 
basically a spray gun better more than an airbrush uh, that comes from Harbor Freight you can watch and get these on sale for nine bucks and uh, they come in a, a kit that has not only this unit but different configurations of spray bottles and hose and everything else I use this because it sprays over this paint tube it will spray the really large uh, basically uh, pigmented sprays like this um, gesso so this is something well worth the investment it also doesn't mess up your really good air gun that you're going to use or your airbrush you're going to use for your finer paints let me show you how this is done as a background here kind of out of frame is a tupperware container i can test my spray and make sure i'm, I'm getting a good spray for my gun this is just going to sit in the background, so when I spray the lure, any residuals are going to go into this and not all over, all over my shop. So I'll just set that back out of the way. Now I'm going to take my first lure, and I like to start in the front and spray right around the front eye, then go straight down the back, put a nice coat on the back, and then just work my way around to the sides. And again, this sprays on thick but a lot of times it takes two coats and I always like to use two coats to make sure I get it covered really well there now that that's, that has its first coat on it I'm going to take my block of foam go back to that and just stick the lure back in that and let it dry until it's ready for a second coat if I'm doing things like this vertical lead jig you don't really have a place you can put a clip on it to hold it so I like to just run a wire through it I'm going to use this wire to hang it to dry also I just usually hold on to it with my fingertips once again I like to work in a, a pattern so I go down one side down the back down the other side and again down the back that's the second coat on this lure. It'll be ready to paint with its regular colors now. Nice thing about these is they put out a lot of paint, but they also do clog up. So I keep a real fine piece of wire handy because you can run that down the paint tube and clear out any clogs or anything you have. Just run it down the paint tube, work it around. and back to spraying again if it does clog up. One of the things I really like about Gesso is that it not only works on the clear plastic and acrylics, it'll work on colored plastics as well, like this top water. And there's the first coat on him. We'll set him aside to dry. But it also works on things like wood. And this is a basswood plug that I turned on my lathe. And I use the same gesso thinned out on my wooden plugs. This helps it take a really nice finish that isn't going to come off. You don't need to use a sealer. You just put the white gesso on it. That seals it and gets it ready for your paint. Then when you put your paint and your clear coat on, it'll come out glossy smooth. Well, now you know my secret for producing a good looking paint job on a bait. And not only good looking, but one that will last. These should sit after they're sprayed with gesso for a couple hours and dry before you put more liquid paint on top of them, just to make sure the gesso has bonded really well with the surface underneath it. I read about people using heat guns and saying, oh, you hit them with a heat gun. And that's okay if you're very, very sparing with the heat because you can create problems. Plastic like this expands a lot as it heats. Paint, not so much. So you put a piece of plastic with paint on it and you heat it, the plastic expands and stretches the paint. When the plastic cools, it cools back down, but the paint doesn't. Now you have places that aren't connected to the lure that are gonna bubble and chip and peel. So go very sparingly on the heat just put them in a room with some nice air circulation and moderately warm room for a couple hours and they'll be ready to go. Upcoming videos I'm going to show you how to paint some different lure patterns that I do, some basic lure patterns 
and uh, that really catch fish. And uh, I hope you stay tuned and watch some more of those. And uh, you have a great day. Happy painting. Thanks for watching.